hi everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Yanish. Uh, I'll just share my presentation. Now. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on ArcGIS for Microsoft Office. Uh, I'm Dipanita Dutt, and I'm an uh, engineer in the data science division of SG India. And today I'll be showing you how to access and use ArcGIS within the familiar environments of Microsoft applications, such as Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI. So let's get started. Just a brief overview on uh, what we're going to cover today. So the introduction to ArcGIS for Microsoft 365, how ArcGIS is integrated within the Microsoft 365 family of applications, uh, understanding the interface and capabilities of these app apps, and extending the functionality with Power Automate will be our last segment. And then uh, I'll be taking any questions if you First of all, the technology changes, how Office has evolved, how Office applications have evolved from being simply Office to Microsoft 365. So Office is a collection of business applications that were installed locally. So they were uh, single one-time cost applications that were installed on your device. There was no connection to the cloud. So there were no new features or upgrades and no technical support. It was just a one-time purchase. And these were mainly desktop apps such as Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. So after it has over the years, it has evolved to the Microsoft 365 collection of uh, applications, which are industry leading applications combined with intelligent cloud services. These are either monthly or yearly subscription based applications, which are connected to the cloud. So these are co constantly getting upgraded as as Microsoft is upgrading them. And there is also constant technical support from the Microsoft team. And these include a much larger family of applications including the Office applications, such as Outlook, SharePoint, uh, Power, uh, um, Power Automate, et cetera. And all these apps are automatically updated. So how does ArcGIS uh, tie into these Microsoft 365 apps? So these uh, ArcGIS extension it, uh, allows innovative mapping across these apps. So you can generate new insights by using maps in, within your spreadsheets, add new dimensions to your Power BI reports, search for files and documents within uh, SharePoint, Automat automate data engineering workflows using Power Automate, and discover, view, and share content. So I'll just go over ArcGIS of Microsoft 365 and how the free uh, version differs from the premium version. So you don't have to have an ArcGIS uh, uh, online account to be able to use the add-in within these Microsoft apps. There are some basic functions which are available even without uh, logging into your ArcGIS account such as uh, when you're mapping your data, you can use X, Y coordinates to uh, from your uh, data to display it on the ArcGIS map. The, and within Power BI, because it ships in the box with Power BI, you can do drive time analysis and add infographics. But the sharing for all these apps is only file-based as you are not connected to the cloud. You can just uh, share uh, depending on your files. However, once you sign in to your ArcGIS account for Microsoft 365, there are much more features which are many more features which are available to you, such as uh, mapping has mapping is extended with the use of addresses, boundaries, and geometry. So we know that once we get CSEs, we don't always have the XY coordinates. Sometimes we have state names, place names, or addresses. So ArcGIS can also uh, geocode your uh, spatial data using these this kind of data. Your analysis is also extended. You can use drive time, buffer, add infographics for across all the apps. And sharing, you can do uh, file-based sharing. You can embed your maps into reports. You can also publish your maps and your data onto the web. And the last icon that you see here is the, is the Teams app. So once you sign into ArcGIS online on Teams, you can also share your maps within the Teams environment. So why should you use ArcGIS uh, add-in for Microsoft? So it's more than a map. It's not about what you see. It's about what you do with what you see. 
So when you're doing data analysis, the analysis starts and ends with data. So the more data that you have, the more robust your analysis will be. So don't ignore the spatial dimension in your data. You might think that uh, your data doesn't have a spatial element, but more actually 80% of data does have a spatial element in the form of custom regions, places of interest, administrative boundaries. So don't ignore your spatial uh, dimension. Now we can, uh, we're ready to get started with the uh, Microsoft Office demos. First, I'll start off with Excel because I think this is probably the most commonly used app out of all of them. Here you are able to create layers and maps in Excel. You can use analytic uh, tools to drive decisions and you can also publish these maps to ArcGIS once you are signed into your account. And the support is also available for the online version of Excel as of this. So let me show you a demo now for Excel. So I hope my Excel screen is visible. So here you can see that uh, I have a spreadsheet which contains um, air quality monitoring stations of India and a lot more data re uh, related to air quality, such as the PM10 levels, the 10th percentile, 90th percentile level of PM at PM10, and also the air quality uh, classification, which is high, moderate, low, or critical. So if you want to display this uh, kind of uh, data on a map, how would you do that? Because as you can see here, we don't have X, Y coordinates. We have the state name, the city name, and a kind of an address location for all your air quality monitoring stations. So what you can do here, first I'll show you how you can add the ArcGIS extension. Okay, so here, if you type ArcGIS for office, you can just directly go to this link, which says download ArcGIS for office. And here, there was a legacy version, which you could download from the uh, S3 site, but now the uh, app is directly available on the Microsoft App Store. You go there and you just add the app. Here. It's downloaded here. Get it now. And once you uh, download this, it adds it to both uh, Excel and PowerPoint. So this Okay, so the ArcGIS uh, extension is here. So here you can click on show map, which will add a map panel to your Arc, uh, Excel spreadsheet. Here you have an option to either sign in or use the free version. So I'm going to sign in because it's going to give me many more features, you, which I can use for my analysis. Once you're signed in, you have the option to add uh, layers from, from your ArcGIS or local data from your Excel sheet. So here, because we want to add this uh, data sheet, we're going to click Excel and we're going to select this table. I recommend converting all your uh, Excel spreadsheets to tables before you do this. So you can just go to insert, select all your data and click on table, which makes it easier for uh, ArcGIS to recognize where your data is located. And here, location type, we don't have coordinates, but because you're signed in, you can actually use all these different kinds of uh, mapping capabilities as well. So here we're going to use address because we have this, this location column. And this is going to use the ArcGIS Ge World Geocoding Service. And you can choose the country from here. 
and you can choose which columns contain your data. So your address of place is contained in the location column and your city is contained in the city column and state is a contained in state column, which is recognized automatically. Now you can just click add to map and it's going to show you how your data is getting populated. So now you can see that your addresses of all these addresses have been geocoded and placed on the map. So now uh, to enhance your visualization, what you can do is first you can rename this table because once you add multiple layers, you're not going to remember which one is which. So if you just put monitoring stations, then you click on this icon here so that you can change the visualization style. So drawing column size, this is going to change the size of the dots depending, uh, depending on uh, which category you want to represent. So here you can choose drawing column air quality. So according to which air quality is, uh, which air quality category each dot is in, it's going to color it according to that. And one thing that is useful when you have a table like this is that you can filter the data dynamically by filtering your uh, data from the spreadsheet. So suppose you just want to view uh, data for Andhra Pradesh, you can select that and it's just going to show you the monitoring stations within Andhra Pradesh. So that's why I recommend that you change your view to a table. And one more thing you can do is that if you don't want to view all categories, you can go uh, to symbology. Symbology and you can see there's a category here called null. So this is not really uh, adding anything to your information. So you can shift this down and you can switch this off. So this is now just showing you the main categories of critical, high, moderate, and low. So you can visualize that here. So now if you want to add another layer to correlate your air quality uh, monitoring, you can also bring in more uh, data sheets and more layers within the same. So here you can add. <clears throat> so here there's a, uh, within Excel, there's a function called get data. So you can add your uh, any other files that you have within Excel. So you can choose Excel or CSV files. So here I have a, for, uh, a forest cover for India layer. So I'll import that. You can see what data you have and load it here. And here you can see this is also in a table version. So now you can add uh, this layer, uh, the data from this sheet into this layer as well. So here again, you can go here forest cover. Here we have another different kind of uh, uh, spatial locations. We don't have coordinates, we don't have addresses, but we have state names. So what you can do here, is go to geography. So what this is going to do is match the state names that you have here with the, the Indo-ArcGIS layer of the India state boundaries. Here you can see India state boundaries 2020. So once you add that, you just have to choose which column is going to be uh, matched to uh, display these uh, states. So you choose the state name here and which column in your data has the state names. Add to map. You can see that it's being geocoded and it has been added over here. Here again, you can change the visualization, the drawing column. You can choose the actual forest cover and you can change the colors so you can visualize it better. So you can see that the Northeastern states have a higher forest cover and they also have lower pollution levels. And here you can uh, divide this by the geographical area of the state to get a more accurate picture of how much the forest cover actually is. So here the northeastern states have a larger percentage of their geographical area covered in forests. And you can see that the air quality is also better. And here these states have a lower percentage of their geographical area covered in forests and the air quality is also much worse. 
so you can correlate these uh, layers. One more type of uh, uh, layer display you can do is you can add you can add another layer here. For state wise, state wise for uh, district wise forest cover within a state. So here you can see that we have state wise cover for a uh, district wise cover for states and uh, districts in Maharashtra. So you can do this here, and this is also a geography type of boundary. So here we can do India districts. India district boundaries, and you can match these district names. <clears throat> boundaries and your district name also getting added to the map. So one thing you'll notice that uh, many, some of these districts have been left blank. This is because the naming conventions of the naming conventions of uh, the, the ArcGIS layer and the naming convention within the Excel spreadsheets are not matched. So all you have to do is just go to the state that is uh, not showing up and just check the spelling. Like Aurangabad is not showing up here. So if I just change the spelling, it should get populated. So you can just change the spellings like that and you can just change it. So you can do the same thing here where you visualize the forest cover. And you can visualize if the state districts with uh, less forest cover are also showing uh, was air quality. So once you have these layers, what you can do, well, because you're signed in uh, to your ArcGIS online account, what you can do is share the map here. So there's an option here called share. So this, once you give your map a title and tags and summary, you can uh, uh, share this map to your ArcGIS online account. So once your map is on ArcGIS online, you can actually use that map now within uh, other ArcGIS apps, such as story maps, dashboards, and web applications. So I will I'll show you where that app is next. If you share the app, where it's here. So you can go here. You can go to your ArcGIS content. And here you have the air quality and forest cover web map. So you can you uh, you can now view that here, and you can also integrate this within other ArcGIS applications. Okay, so now I'll be moving on uh, with the demo, the next demo. So that is ArcGIS for SharePoint. So SharePoint, as you know, is a, a cloud-based uh, storage service where you can store all kinds of documents from PDFs, Excel. Uh, all uh, and these kind of documents, and these are all accessible over the cloud, so you can access them on any device. So ArcGIS is also integrated with uh, SharePoint. You can uh, upgrade, you can uh, display your SharePoint lists as an ArcGIS layer. You can publish these maps to ArcGIS, similar to how you're publishing them on Excel, and you can uh, also geocode your documents. So I'll show you a demo here how a SharePoint list is being added as a feature. I have 
here I have a SharePoint list which is showing you uh, accounts under the uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana scheme as of 2021, and this is all state-wise data. So it's showing you the total uh, uh, AMJDY accounts and the operative PMJDY accounts, and the location uh, because uh, the location of these uh, the centroid of each state can also be calculated within SharePoint itself. So it helps you to display these as points within your map. So here, if you have an ArcGIS SharePoint site, you can add an ArcGIS uh, uh, map within the uh, site itself. So here, what you do is you go, go to the layers and you can access all your SharePoint documents. And here you can see the lists that are available. So here is my list of all the PMJDY accounts. So I've added that here. So here it's showing you in the, uh, it has located uh, the points within all the states and displayed it here. So you can change this display by choosing the size. So if I want to show how many total PMJDY accounts are there. So here you can see that it's showing that uh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, these have a large number of uh, uh, PMJDY accounts. But if you're not getting an accurate idea of this, so you can show, uh, uh, you can actually visualize it differently. You can go to layers, visualize, choose operative PMJDY accounts. Then go to colors and amounts and divide by the total number of accounts. So now you can see that it actually appears differently. And Lakshwadeep Islands actually have a large number of operative accounts compared to the total accounts. And the Northeast, which was previously showing a very small number of total accounts, is also having a very large percentage of operative accounts. So this is how uh, visualizing your data actually helps you see something which you can't see it within your spreadsheets. Now, uh, moving on to the next demo, which is for Power BI. So Power BI is an application which is mostly for business analysts and uh, business related dashboards. So uh, ArcGIS ships within the box with Power BI. So there's no separate installation for ArcGIS add-in over here. It, it uh, Once you make an, uh, a Power BI dashboard, it is responsive with other visuals. Each element of the dashboard is responsive with all other elements of the dashboard. And having the ArcGIS add-in also adds the drive time buffer analysis and the map visualization element of it. So now we'll move on to the Power BI demo where you can analyze sales of competing coffee chains, for example. Okay. So now this is, we are within the Power BI environment. So here you can add data from multiple sources. We are going to add an Excel uh, data sheet. So what you can do is go to your Excel workbook and choose any data from here and just open it. If I want to open this, I'll just open it. It will connect to your Excel sheet and you can choose which table you want to access and then add it within your uh, Power BI environment. So here I'm going to show you a dashboard that I've already made. Okay.
Okay, so now my uh, copy chains dashboard is visible. So here I'll show you the visualization. So the field, the sheet that I've added here, it contains the revenue of each shop, the name of the shops and the location fields. So you can see here the latitude, longitude, which contains the locations, the months for each, uh, the months for, for which each revenue is recorded and the totals for the quarter. So these are the fields which you can add uh, to visualize and filter. And for visualization, you can see that ArcGIS ships within the box with Power BI. So we already have an extension here, which you don't need to download separately. So here, once you uh, make this uh, visualization, each uh, element of this is, in, uh, is dynamically connected with each other. So you can uh, filter these. Suppose you only want to see one of the coffee chains. So each element within the map within the dashboard will actually uh, be dynamically connected with this. So you can see the locations for both of them separately, or you can also see them together. And once you click on these, you can also visualize the revenue for each month for each shop separately. So all of your uh, data here in the dashboard is connecting dynamically with your map and your, uh, your visuals are also changing. So once you go to this uh, chart here, you can see all the different options that you have. So here, if I want to add infographics, like I've added here, what you can do is go to the infographics section, which is this one, and you can choose which country you want these infographics for. So I want to show it for India. So here it will show you all the different, uh, uh, the variables that are available, which you can display as infographics here. So you can display population, income, households, spending patterns. So what I've added here, which is re relevant to my data, is the per capita spending and the per capita purchasing power. So these infographic cards are also actually dynamically linked to uh, your map. So once you zoom into a section of the map, these will also dynamically change. So it can actually show you that if your revenue is more or less in a certain area, so is it because the per capita uh, income is low or is it because people's spending patterns are different in this area? Uh, one more interesting uh, thing that you can do here is you can calculate drive times. So what you can see here that this Starbucks location is having a, quite a high revenue. So what could be the reason for this? So if we click on this and we go here to calculate drive time, so choose input features, we go to our coffee shops layer and we choose this. So here it's showing that one feature is selected. So now we want to see if there are any shops uh, located within five minutes of this. You can also change it to maybe 10. 10 minutes of this shop. So let's run this analysis. So you can see that within this, within 10 meters of this Starbucks, there are very, uh, very few shops located. And within five minutes, five minutes of drive time, there are even less shops located. So maybe that could be the reason why the revenue of your, uh, what this Starbucks location especially is higher. So adding this kind of uh, analysis to your uh, business dashboard can really help you to decide which are your prime locations or which locations could uh, use more of more branches of your coffee chain. Now let's move on to the next demo. So now uh, we'll see how ArcGIS is also integrated into Teams. So over the past two years, since we had the lockdown and we had work from home, Teams, Microsoft Teams has become the most popular way to communicate and collaborate with team members. So here within uh, Teams also, there is an extension, there's an add-in for uh, 
ArcGIS. So you can access ArcGIS uh, within the Teams environment and you can search, view and share your maps and apps within Teams itself. So you can uh, leverage map and scene view capabilities. You can open ArcGIS apps such as story maps and dashboards. And you can also use survey one, two, three within Teams. And this is available when you log in with your ArcGIS online account. So I'll also show you how uh, you can send maps and apps within the Teams environment. So first of all, uh, you go here, you can just search ArcGIS for Teams. <clears throat> so here it will give you a product page for ArcGIS for Teams. But this will show you how how you can keep your content organized, how you can use Microsoft Teams, how it works. And you can also download ArcGIS for Teams from this website as well. So you can download it here. And once you download this application, you can access it within Teams. So here you can see this ArcGIS Maps extension has been added. So this is a chatbot from which you can uh, search all your ArcGIS online content and you can keep uh, keep a Sorry record of it. Sorry to interrupt. We, we cannot see uh, your screen. Demo one. Is it visible now? Yeah. So here within the Teams uh, environment, you can see the, you can see the ArcGIS maps add-in. And you can also go to any one, any chat that you want. Suppose this chat. And here, when you go down to your message section, you can click here and you can find uh, the ArcGIS Maps extension over there. So once you click this, this will give you access to all uh, ArcGIS online content. And once you sign in over here, because I'm signed in now, I can also view my content and the content within my organization. So you, uh, because I had uploaded that Excel map, suppose, uh, which I had done the air quality monitoring. So I can search that here. Air quality. And forest cover. I can select that here and post it. And I can send it to all my team members. So because it has become common for many people who work based in different offices to be working on the same projects, it's important to keep everybody updated on the progress of the work so they can all be on the same page. So here, because of this um, Teams add-in for ArcGIS, you can open, you can uh, share your maps and everything within the Teams environment itself, and people can open and view it here within Teams without having to open their browser. So all the functions that are available on ArcGIS Online are available within this Teams add-in as well. So you can view each layer separately. You can turn on and off layers. You can change the base map, add charts. So everything that's available in ArcGIS Online is also available within Teams. And it's not only web applications. You can also share uh, 3D scenes here. So if I, once again, I go here. I go to my organization. So or whatever people have uploaded with at the organization sharing level, I can see that here and I can share it with my team. So if I search for a 3D scene, I can see that there is a Varanasi 3D map here. So if I post that, I can open that within, uh, I can open this 3D scene within Teams as well.
Yeah, you can see all the 3D buildings of Varanasi. And you can rotate it and view it within the Teams environment. Okay. So one more thing I'll quickly show you before I move on to Power Automate is how you can add uh, uh, your maps within PowerPoint as well. So PowerPoint is part of the ArcGIS Office download. So once you download ArcGIS for Office, it that in will also be uh, added with PowerPoint. So you the same thing, this same process here as well. You will just log into Power, you just open PowerPoint and your ArcGIS extension will be added here. So you sign in and then you can add all your uh, ArcGIS online content dynamically to a PowerPoint presentation. So here you click on add map and it will show you your catalog of your con your content your organization's content online content so whichever map you want to add you can add that here so suppose i want to add this air quality and forest cover so i'll add that here so it's getting populated and you can choose which layers you want to show how you want the legends to be displayed and you can choose the layout of the map as well. So here I'll choose the default layer where the map takes up the whole presentation screen. Here you can review it. It'll show you how your map is going to appear in your slide and you can insert the map. So here you can see there's an option called click to unlock map. So once you put your uh, uh, slide in presentation mode, you click on this unlock icon so it's going to give you a live view of your map. So here you're able to access your map dynamically within PowerPoint without having to uh, switch to your browser and open ArcGIS online and access your content over there. So you can uh, just add this uh, map dynamically within your slide. And when you're presenting, just unlock it and you can zoom in and show each feature. Now, and when you're close, you want to lock this, you can just exit live and move on to the next slide. PowerPoint. Now we'll move on to the last demo of today's session, which is extending, extending your uh, capabilities of Microsoft 365 using Power Automate. So what is Power Automate? It is a, a Power Automate is an online tool within Microsoft 365 family of apps for the creation of automated workflows between apps and services, which is used for synchronizing files, getting notifications and collecting data. So what are the benefits of this is that it allows you to collect data, get notifications and execute your uh, workflows on a schedule or a trigger, which will uh, which carries out your work automatically without human intervention. So it's much faster and it also reduces human er error while, data, uh, while you're collecting data. So adoption of the uh, RPA, which is the robotic process automation. So um, Microsoft had con uh, conducted a study in 2018, estimating that 85% of large and very large organizations will have deployed some form of RPA by 2023. <laughs> So 2022, when they carried out the survey, they saw that it is actually in line with their prediction. And many sectors of a corporate are actually uh, integrating RPA into their work, including human resources. So what is Power Automate? It is a no-code solution to working with ArcGIS. Or, <coughs> it's, uh, or even if there is coding, it's no-code, like, like Excel kind of formulas. So ArcGIS is also integrated within Power Automate. <laughs> so, uh, excuse me. So, actions such as single or multi line address matching, geocoding, boundary matching, routing, and directions, 
demographic enrichment. It, it's all integrated within Power Automate. And you can also connect to Arceus using your uh, Arceus identity or your API key. So there are uh, multiple endless use cases for RPA. You can connect uh, Microsoft 365 dynamically with ArcGIS field apps. You can automate data updates into Power BI and spreadsheets. You can geocode SharePoint lists. You can enrich data with uh, demographic variables. You can also send notifications via Teams or email based on data changes. You can place tag teams messages on a map. You can classify images and notifications. The applications are actually endless. Now I'll show you a very simple demo for how to visualize form response for locations in real time. So you can all participate in this demo. So let's see how that is working. So first you can, what you can do here, once you go to Power Automate for ArcGIS, suppose you want uh, to see what kind of workflows are available for uh, Power Automate and ArcGIS. So it all actually offers a uh, So there are a lot of uh, pre-configured workflows for Power Automate. So you can just build them like, uh, just stack them like blocks and carry out your workflows. So I'll show you one very simple workflow, which I created. So here, when I go to Power Automate, I can see all the flows that I have made. So we're going to see this one today, which is the tracking of uh, survey one, two, three responses in an Excel online sheet. So I'll just show you what is the workflow over here. So this is just consisting of three blocks. So what I'm going to do here is I have created a, a ArcGIS a survey one, two, three a form. And so each time a survey response is submitted, it's going to link to my ArcGIS online, uh, my Excel online business sheet and input that data into uh, the Excel sheet. And when each time somebody responds to the survey and the rows of the Excel spreadsheet are updated, it's going to post a message in my chat. So once you uh, fill in all, all these uh, workflows, all these uh, connectors are pre-configured. So all you have to do is just customize it with your uh, form name or your sheet name, your group chat, and then you can just save it and just test your uh, workflow. So the perform the starting action for this is to fill the form. So what I'm going to do is I'll just show you the code, the QR code for the form, and I'll also post the link in the chat. So all of you can fill in uh, the survey. So all this requires is that you give your you allow the survey to ac access your location and then it will populate the Excel online sheet and hopefully we can visualize it. So you can also scan this QR code from your mobiles and I'll also post it on the chat. Just let me know if the link is working. We haven't received the link, I believe. Yeah, no, it's there. Once I run test, all uh, the uh, for the flow is going to be triggered every time anyone fills in the form. 
So you can see here that the flow is running successfully and we should be able to see everybody's data within this Excel sheet. Yeah. You can see that everyone's data is getting dynamically added over here. Yeah, so now you can see that every time somebody is filling in the survey, because I've added the layer here already for webinar attendees, each time you update the sheet here, the sheet row is getting added and the map is getting populated with everyone's locations. So we can see that there are people outside India also who have attended this. Just a second. <clears throat> okay. So I hope the screen is visible now. So because my uh, Excel sheet is connected to OneDrive and it's all connected via cloud, each time the survey is getting updated, a new row is getting added to the spreadsheet and a new data point is getting added to the map. And another thing, because I have enabled that uh, I should get a Teams notification, I should also be getting that notification over here. So you should be able to see. So each time somebody updates my survey, I'll be able to see who has answered my survey and that a new row has successfully been added to the spreadsheet. So we can see all the names of the people who have answered the survey. So thank you. Okay, so we have visualized form response locations now in real time. And that is the end of today's webinar. That was today's last demo. So I hope you enjoyed that. And now if you have any questions, please send it in the chat. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deparvita, for such an insightful presentation and demo. Uh, lot of a lot of people have requested for the recording of the webinar. Uh, so we will soon be sharing recording of this webinar to you uh, by, uh, on your registered email address. Alternatively, you can visit and subscribe to EC India's YouTube channel as well for the recording of uh, our past webinars and events. Uh, I can see a few of the questions have already, already been answered by panelists over chat. Uh, so I'll take a, a few left one just. So, uh, so there are a lot of questions. There were a few questions which which were around, you know, uh, the uh, the version of Microsoft, Microsoft Office which is required to use this add-in. So it's like uh, ArcGIS add-in add-in add-on. Sorry, ArcGIS add-on is available in Microsoft 365 only, or it is available on various versions of uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, yes, thank you for your question. Um, at this part, because ArcGIS is a, uh, it's a cloud based connection, but so it's not, not going to be available for Word 2003 or Word 2007. It's only going to be available for the Microsoft, Microsoft 365, which is the latest version of the Word application, the Excel application. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, is there any limitation on number of rows that can be pulled in for visualization? Uh, 
Uh, I've uh, successfully pulled in about uh, 2,000 to 3,000 rows. So I haven't tested beyond that, but successfully you can do up to 3,000 rows. Okay. Uh, so can we save the edited maps and use it as an image? Um, as far as I know, you ca can't save a map as an image. You can just save it either within as a like as an embedded map within your spreadsheet, or you can uh, share it on ArcGIS Online as a map. You cannot save it as a JPG image. Just a minute. I'm again getting request for the YouTube channel link. Let me post that link on the chat window. Uh, so we have another question, which is how can we add a shape file in Power BI for data visualization? Um, let me just go to the Power BI uh, environment and just see. One second. Okay, so here uh, you have a lot of options for data ingestion, such as CSV, XML, JSON. I don't see an option for shapefile, but I am not sure about that, so I'll have to get back to you. Okay. So I think I see all of the question has been answered. I'll take the last one. So participant, if uh, um, if there is any question. If your question is unanswered and if you or is you want to ask any question regarding this webinar, you can write to us at info at efri.in and we'll respond back to you. So I'll take a last question. So uh, this is, is ArcGIS add-on available for Tableau? Uh, so far it is not available for Tableau. It is available just for these applications that I have shown so far. Great. Uh, thank you, Dipanjana, for the presentation. Over to you, Ganesh. Thank you. Thank you all the participants and the speakers for joining this session. On the behalf of ISRI India, we wish you all a great day ahead. Thank you. And you all may disconnect now. Thank you, everyone.